Day 20 of the New Testament by Pentecost Reading Challenge. Today we read John 7 through 12. And when you finish today's reading, you are halfway through our list. Congratulations. This video is a departure from our normal format. Today I want to briefly summarize some of the major factions of Judaism of the first century. As we read John, we find quite a bit of polemic against the Jews, which as mentioned when we read similarly angry passages in Matthew, have led to tragic consequences and persecution in modern times. It has become routine for mainline pastors to say that this should be taken about the Jewish authorities and contextualized, yet I'd like us to go still a bit deeper than that. As I've mentioned, there were numerous different factions in the first century, of which those of us who became Christian were initially among the smallest group. I think having some insight into the other first century Jewish factions enhances our understanding of New Testament text. Pharisees were active in synagogues and focused on an observance of purity rituals such as tithing and food restrictions, drawn from the law or Torah, and also later oral traditions. Pharisees believed in a resurrection of the dead. Paul emerged from this tradition, where leaders were often called rabbi or teacher. So while they are the most frequent opponents of Jesus in the New Testament, that is likely because many of them considered him to be one of them, just disagreeing on some specifics. Sometimes our loudest fights are with those we are closest to. Most streams of modern Judaism emerged from this pharisaic movement. Sadducees also followed the law as recorded in Torah, but they rejected newer oral traditions. Drawn mostly from the wealthy classes, they were political rivals of the Pharisees and Herodians, closely associated with the temple and likely holding the most seats in the Sanhedrin, or Jewish ruling council, in Jerusalem. Another key difference with the Pharisees and the group that would later become known as Christians is that the Sadducees did not believe in a general resurrection. The destruction of the temple in 70 AD largely ended the influence of this group. Levites and priests. The men of this tribe were the priests in the Old Testament, associated with the temple at Jerusalem. They offered sacrifice and performed other duties as outlined in the Levitical Holiness Code. In the first century context, they are usually seen to be aligned with Roman authority and have significant but not complete overlap with the Sadducees. There is some tension here in that the Romans took it upon themselves to appoint and dispose of high priests at various times, greatly disrupting Jewish tradition. Scribes. This is not so much a separate political group as a learned member of each of the other groups. They were trained to write and trained to interpret written texts, such as the scriptures. But as a special class, they would have much in common with each other, despite affiliations with other groups. Zealots. Members of a variety of nationalistic revolutionary groups, usually dedicated to the violent overthrow of Roman and other authorities, and the reestablishment of an independent Jewish kingdom. Groups of zealots briefly succeeded in overthrowing Roman, Roman rule around 66 AD, which led to a massive Roman response and the destruction of the temple in 70. Technically, the term zealous could also be used of one not advocating violence, but zealous for the law in the sense of earnestness and dedication. Paul describes himself in this sense in Galatians 1. Scholars debate which meaning should be assigned to the disciple known as Simon the Zealot. I would suggest the former. Indeed, I would argue there's still a strain of Christianity dedicated to seeing Christ in terms of militaristic power. Essens. Essens were a smaller group or sect, or perhaps several sects, that were thought to have lived in isolated communal monastic style camps. Qumran is thought to have been one. It was destroyed by the Romans around 68 AD, and the Dead Sea Scrolls found hidden in caves there are usually associated with Essens. Essens found the general society so corrupt and impure and hopeless that withdrawing and starting over were the only valid options. They led a communitarian life with strict rules and rituals, but rejected temple worship and most Jewish festivals as corrupted. They're not clearly mentioned in the New Testament, but they are discussed by Jewish historians Josephus and Philo and are well documented in archaeological finds. Some scholars think John the Baptist was one of them. Herodians, mentioned in Mark and Matthew, but not elsewhere. These are supporters of Herod's rule. They may have aligned with the Pharisees. 
These are primarily court officials and their friends. Some see overlaps with the Essens. Perhaps after de Herod's death, they withdrew. But this is far from certain. Samaritans. Most Jews of the day would not have considered Samaritans Jewish. John 4, for example, told us they did not associate. Samaritans traced their heritage to ten of the original twelve tribes of Israel, who split off into the northern kingdom after Solomon's death. They retained ancient practices of worshipping at altars built in high places, as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had. Notice that the woman at the well in John 4 asked if Jesus was greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well. God-fearers. Fear means awe or honoring. These are people of Gentile origin who had not fully converted to Judaism, for example, they had not been circumcised, but who nonetheless worshipped the God of Israel, would gather at or near synagogues to read the scriptures, remember that means the Old Testament in this case, and who were thus most likely the bulk of those Paul would convert to Christianity during his ministry. Lydia in Acts 16 is a likely example of a God-fearer. Disciples of John the Baptist, of Jesus of Nazareth, of Apollo, of other uh, itinerant teachers. These groups made nearly everyone else nervous, as they were something new and different. Obviously, we who call ourselves Christian have descended from an early group of Jesus of Nazareth's disciples, who came to understand and proclaim him as the Messiah. I hope that this overview helps you see the Jews as more diverse and complex than before not so different from our various denominations and affiliations today. Blessings on your reading.